you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Blasted alarm. Let me sleep. Oh, all right, I hear you. It's 701 on a beautiful spring morning. What's so beautiful about it? And this is Mike Munn, here with some more sunshine music on your favorite listening station, Radio K Rand. Oh, phew, shut up! So, whether you're on the way to work or just waking up, relax. We'll be with you all day long, bringing you melodic masterpieces around the clock. Off, I say. I did not set this radio to go on at all. And before we start another set of timeless hits, here's a special message for one of our favorite listeners, Bartlett Finchley. What? Mr. Finchley, we know you're out there, so put on a happy face. Take some time to smell the coffee, and remember... We love you madly, but we'd love you even more if you'd get out. Nobody wants you here, so you may as well pack up and get out now. We'll see about that. Of all the outrageous gall. Operator, get me K Rant. Yes, the radio station. No, I don't know the number. Uh, kindly dial it for me. If you can spare a moment from your crossword puzzle. K Rand, how may I direct your call? Connect me with Mike Munn. I beg your pardon? Munn. You're asinine disc jockey. I'm sorry, sir, but there's no one here by that name. Of course there is. I just heard him on the radio. He took it upon himself to broadcast a personal insult directly and specifically aimed at me. We play all music all the time, sir. Do you know who you're speaking to? This is Bartlett Finchley. Yes, Mr. Finchley? And I will not be addressed in such a manner, on or off the air. Of course not, sir. Which manner? I'm sure you know full well what I'm talking about. The airwaves are licensed by the Federal Communications Commission, and they are not to be used for personal messages. I'm sure the FCC will be most interested in these blatant violations. They'll pull your license so fast it'll make your empty head spin like a top. But we don't have disc jockeys. We don't broadcast any messages at all. Only beautiful music 24 hours a day, plus commercials, of course. Let me speak to your station manager. Yes, sir. Please hold. And don't you dare place me on hold, you high school dropout! Oh, for the love of... I don't have time for this nonsense. I will not have it. I'll write a blistering letter to the FCC that will knock this rinky-dink station off the air. Hello? I want to file a complaint. A very, very serious complaint about your broadcasting policies. Come off it, Finchley. What did you say? Get off your high horse and give it a rest. Or you're out of here. You low-life nincompoop. How dare you address me in that fashion. I'll have you fired on the spot. What is your name, you, you... Cretinous subhuman... Don't you hang up on me! Hello? 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 This is Mr. Bartlett Finchley, age 42, a practicing sophisticate and dedicated misanthrope who writes very special and very precious things for gourmet magazines, critical journals, and the like. He's a bachelor and a recluse with few friends, only devotees and adherents to the cause of tart sophistry. He has no interest save whatever current annoyances he can find to occupy his mind. He has no purpose to his life except the formulation of day-to-day -day opportunities to vent his wrath on the mechanical contrivances of an age he abhors. In short, Mr. Bartlett Finchley is a malcontent, 
born either too late or too early in history, and who in just a moment will enter a realm where muscles and the will to fight back are not limited to human beings. Next stop for Mr. Bartlett Finchley, The Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, A Thing About Machines, starring Mike Starr, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. How are you today, Mr. Finchley? I'll answer that burning question after you tell me what's wrong with this electronic abomination in my living room. You mean your TV set? And also acquaint me with how much your current larceny is going to cost me. Well, let's see here. Two hours labor, new circuit board, new oscillator, new comb filter... How very technical and how very nice. Speak English, man. Well, you asked me what was wrong. Never mind the subterfuge. I presume I'm to be dunned once again for three times the worth of the bloody thing. I didn't charge you for my travel time. The total. What is the total? Here you go, Finchley. Surely you jest. All right, all right. I'll give you a break on the sales tax, seeing as how you're a regular. But but this is the price of a meal in a four-star restaurant with wine. Labor don't come cheap nowadays. And neither, apparently, does my peace of mind. I requested that the device be restored to working order, the alternative being more disruptions to my writing schedule. Well, you could just get a new one every time. Might be easier all around. Last time I was here, Mr. Finchley, you'd kicked your foot through the picture tube, remember? I have a vivid recollection. It was not working properly, like every other electronic contraption in this house. I tried to rehabilitate it. By wrecking it? After a certain point, that is the only option left. I disposed of a clock radio in a similar manner this morning. Unfortunately, I must view a cooking program this evening in order to write my review of their fare, which I'm sure will be abysmal as usual, if the television should choose to operate at all. Why don't you just horsewhip it, Mr. Finchley? That'd show it who's boss. What do you say we cease the small talk? Let's get down to the petty larceny and be done with it. I'll put it on your tab. Send me a check before I come out the next time. I sometimes wonder exactly what it is the purpose of the Better Business Bureau in such transactions. You got a complaint about my work? When they allow you itinerant extortionists to come back week after week, move wires around busily probe with ham-like hands, and accomplish nothing but the financial ruin of every customer on your route. We're not a jip outfit, Mr. Finchley. We're legitimate repairmen. But I'll tell you something about yourself... Spare me, please. I'm sure there must be some malnutrition analyst with an aging mother to care for whom I can contact for that purpose. Why don't you hear me out, Mr. Finchley? That set doesn't work because you obviously got back there and yanked out wires and heaven knows what else. You had me over here last month to fix your tape recorder because you'd thrown it down the steps. It did not work properly. Well, that's the point, Mr. Finchley. Why don't they work properly? Offhand, I'd say it's because you don't treat them properly. I assume there's no charge for that bit of analysis. What does go wrong with these things, Mr. Finchley? Have any idea? Have I any idea? (laughs) Now that's worth a scholarly ten lines in your repairman's journal. Bilk the customer, but let him do the diagnosis. Well, the reason I ask that is because... Whatever it is that really bothers you about that television set, and the radio, and all the rest, it's something you're not telling me. Aside from being a rather incompetent clod, you're a most unreceptive listener. I've explained to you already. The television set simply did not work properly. And as for that original Marconi operating under the guise of a radio, it gave me nothing but static. You sure that was all that was wrong with them? I choose my words very precisely, thank you. Well, there you go. TV's okay again, for now. I'll send you a complete bill, Mr. Finchley. Of this I have no doubt. Finchley, what is it with you, anyway? With me? Well, with you and machines, that is. 
any type of machine, as far as I can tell. Just curious. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. If it's something personal. I will file that idiotic question in my memorabilia to be referred to at some future date when I write my memoirs. You will fill one entire chapter. The most forgettable person I have ever met. It just so happens, you boob. It just so happens that every machine in this house refuses to cooperate. On any level. They behave as if... There. You see what I mean? Enough. I said that will be just about enough of that. Stop. Stop. Stop, please. Miss Rogers? Oh, yes, Mr. Finchley? Let me see the pages. Yes, sir. Is that all you've done? That's all I've done. Two articles and one column almost completely retyped. Forty pages in three and a half hours. That's the best I can do, Mr. Finchley. It's that idiotic gadget of yours. Humming and clicking away. I suppose it's about to break down, too. It's perfectly fine for a typewriter if you'd let me use a word processor. My words don't need processing. They've already been diced and sliced by the most perfect processor known to man, the human brain, which in my case comes with a great deal of priceless expertise. But a computer would increase the speed. I wouldn't have to worry about ribbons, correction tape. The solution to that, Miss Rogers is increased accuracy. I'm extremely accurate, Mr. Finchley, and it's not my speed that's the problem. This is an old-fashioned, out-of-date technology. If you'd allow me to bring a computer in here... Oh, no! Not in my house! More unnecessary bells and whistles. Thomas Jefferson wrote out the preamble to the Constitution of the United States with an ink pot and a feather quill. It took him only half a day. Then why don't you hire Mr. Jefferson? Did I ever tell you with what degree of distaste I view insubordination? Oh, yes. Many times. Often and endlessly. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'll tell you what, Mr. Finchley. From now on, you can get yourself another girl. Somebody with three arms and roughly the same sensitivity as an alligator. Then the two of you can work together till death do you part. As for me, I've had it. And you are going where? Where? I think I might take in Bermuda for a couple of weeks, or Mexico, or maybe a quiet sanitarium on the banks of the Hudson. Now, Miss Rogers... Any place where I can be as far away as possible from the highly articulate, oh-so-sophisticated bon vivant of America's whiners and diners, Mr. Bartlett Finchley. Miss Rogers, you don't mean that. And surely you're not serious. You've even got me talking like you. But I'll tell you what you won't get me to do. You won't turn me into a female Finchley with a pinched, scornful little heart and a mean, petty, yellow jaundiced view of everybody else in the world. Miss Rogers, please. Please don't leave. I beg your pardon? Um, I wish you'd reconsider. Speak up. I can't hear you. I wish you'd... You'd stay for a little bit longer. You what? I don't mean to work. All that can wait. Then why? I was just thinking. Well, we might have dinner. You're not serious. Or something, perhaps a cocktail. You are serious. I am. I'm not very hungry, and it's too early for cocktails. What's your trouble, Mr. Finchley? You sound like a half-hearted orphan whose idea of a lark is a square dance at the local Grange. Uh, I'm merely suggesting to you, Miss Rogers, that we observe the simple social amenities between an employer and a secretary. I thought we'd go out, even take in a show or something. How very sweet, Mr. Finchley. Thank you, but no thank you. 
Tonight, I'm taking a hog calling lesson. You know what a hog is, don't you, Mr. Finchley? He's a terribly bright fathead who writes for gourmet magazines and condescends to let a few other slobs exist in the world just to take his rudeness and run back and forth at his beck and call. Good day, Mr. Finchley. Miss Rogers, before, b before you go... Have a cup of coffee, or anything, anything at all. If you must know, I'd like very much, I'd like very much not to be alone for a while. Are you ill? No, not as such. Then what's the trouble? Does there have to be trouble because I... I'm desperately tired. I've hardly slept for four nights. And the very thought of being alone now, well, frankly, it's intolerable. Things have been happening, Miss Rogers. Very odd things. Go on. That, that TV set in the corner. It goes on late at night. It just goes on all by itself. I see you got it fixed. And the clock radio I kept in my bedroom. It went on and off, too, of its own accord, whenever I tried to catch up on my sleep. I'll let you in on a little secret. There's a conspiracy afoot in this house, Miss Rogers. Really, Mr. Finchley? That's exactly what it is. A conspiracy. The, the television set, the radio, electrical devices of every sort. That miserable car I drive. Even the clock on the mantelpiece. There's no clock on the mantel. I know. I, I threw it away. Why would you do that? What I'm getting at, Miss Rogers, is that for as long as I've lived, I've never been able to satisfactorily operate... Machines. Mr. Finchley, I think you ought to see a doctor. A doctor? Oh, the universal panacea of dreamless idiots. If you're depressed, see a doctor. If you're happy, see a doctor. If the mortgage is too high and the salary too low, see a doctor. You, Miss Rogers, you see a doctor. I am a logical, rational, intelligent man. I know what I see. I know what I hear. And for the past three months, I've been sharing this house with a collection of wheezy Frankenstein monsters whose whole purpose is to destroy me. Now, what do you think of that? I think you're terribly ill. I think you need medical attention. You obviously haven't heard a word I've said. I think you've got a very bad case of nerves from lack of sleep. By no choice of my own, I assure you. And I think that way down deep, you yourself realize that these things are nothing more than delusions. Now I know what you really think of me. That I'm to be pitied. That I'm a poor wretch. Not in my right mind. That Think what you like. Now where are you going? You don't need company, Mr. Finchley. You need analysis. You're no better than a cogwheel robotic machine yourself. You have an iota of compassion or sympathy. Mr. Finchley, please, let go of my arm. I'll let you go when I get good and ready to let you go. Mr. Finchley, let's not make an ugly scene here. Now, come on, let me go. Mr. Finchley, let go of me! Get out of here and don't come back! With distinct pleasure and manifest relief. Don't ever come back. I'll send you your check. I will not be intimidated by machines, so it follows that no empty-headed little secretary with a mechanical expression is going to get away with anything either. Mr. Finchley, in this conspiracy you're suffering, this mortal combat between you and the appliances, I hope you get licked. Good riddance! What? More typewriting? Oh, you think you'll turn yourself on any time if you like it, do you? Uh, let's see what you've written. Get out of here, Finchley. Get out of here, Finchley? Who are you to tell me to get out of my own house? You're a machine, a silly machine, an inanimate object. All right, that's it. This is war. You're not going to intimidate me. Did you hear what I said? You're not going to get away with it, you... Machines! Nice day, huh? 
define your terms. I, uh, I was only making conversation, Mr. Finchley. Just see to it that this elevator takes me all the way to my destination without a mishap. 19th floor. I'm surprised I got here in one piece. Pardon, sir? No matter. You wouldn't understand. You couldn't, since you choose to collaborate with these infernal contraptions all day long. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Finchley. Is it? I just meant... I know what you meant. The warm, languid weather outside. Fluffy white clouds scudding across a pale blue sky. The sort of day when a young woman's thoughts turn to romantic mush. Disgusting. Mr. Finchley, I assure you I... Well, I'll have none of it. Do you hear? Excuse me. Editorial department? Ah, another telephone. Mr. Alexander Graham Bell's most loathsome invention. It undoubtedly knows my whereabouts at all times. Please hold. Mr. Finchley, did you want to see the editor? No need. I simply wish to drop off my manuscripts for the next issue, the reviews and the personal opinion column. Oh, and kindly note, the final pages are handwritten this time. How did your computer crash? By no means. My typewriting apparatus is in the shop. Actually, I prefer this method. It allows me to make last-minute revisions directly from my hand to your eye, as it were. I'll tell them it's here. Then I shall take my leave. Out into the blinding white heat of the cruelest month. Reflux Publications? Iron Gourmet Magazine? Just a moment, please. You there! Why are you touching my automobile? I'm writing you a citation, sir. For what reason? Overtime parking. What? The meter ran out. That's impossible. You can mail in the fine or pay in person. There's something wrong with the meter. Surely you can see that. I see a red flag. That's a violation. But I deposited the correct coins. Maybe you did. Just not enough, that's all. On the contrary, I've been gone for 13 minutes. I inserted coinage worth exactly 30 minutes. Well, it doesn't look like it. Then the meter's not working properly. Take it easy. You don't want to break city property now, do you? It's already broken. Definitely and absolutely. It runs too fast. Any fool can see that it did not register a full 30 minutes after swallowing my money. If you want to contest it, court hours are 8 to 5, plus night court on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is a gross miscarriage of justice. I'm just doing my job, mister. Here's your citation. Have a nice day. One more mechanical abomination designed to make my life a living hell. One side, madam. You, sir. Move your vehicle out of my way. Watch it, Mac. Watch what exactly, you imbecile? This is my lane. Park it, Pops. Oof, all the insolent. Get that rail trap off the road. Stand aside. Bartlett Finchley is at the wheel. I earned my first driving license while that bully was still in kindergarten. The barbarians are at the gates. Yet another red light, waiting for some mother and her toddler to cross the street. Oh, look at them. Stuffed to bursting on cheeseburgers. What's wrong with you? Are you blind? I did nothing. Simply placed my foot on the brake pedal. On the gas, you mean? The car moved forward under its own power. Yeah, sure. You trying to kill somebody? I saw the whole thing. He did try to kill you. On the contrary, the motor car obviously malfunctioned. We're in a crosswalk here. Get his license number. You do that. The light is now green. Do I have your permission to proceed? Get that piece of crap out of here. Gladly. Pardon me, attendant. If I may be so bold... Yeah? When will you be finished with the repairs? On the old four-door? 
Soon, I trust, you've had more than enough time. Right. It's sparked over there. Ah, my congratulations. And now for the bad news. What is this going to cost me? Nothing. For a break overhaul? You mean no charge for the labor? I'll consider that a professional courtesy. I mean no charge, period. So you haven't completed the work? My good man, I can't wait around this gas station all day. There's nothing wrong with it. I checked the brakes, transmission, the works. It's an oldie, but there ain't nothing wrong with that car. Nothing? She's a classic. You know, you could sell that baby for good money if you want. But I distinctly felt the machine roll forward under its own volition. All the same. It's working perfect. Real cherry set of wheels you got there. I know a collector looking for something like that. I'll give you, say, nine hundred. Nine hundred dollars? The hubcaps cost more than that. Okay, a grand. Give me the keys. If you say so. Here you go, Mr. Finchley. But she's not going to last forever, you know. You ought to get back what you put into it. Buy yourself a nice new car. If you can hang on a minute, I'll call the guy. And waste even more of my precious time? Good day. Wait up! Ah, now you deduce what's wrong, as I'm about to drive away. Eleven hundred. Cash on the barrel head. Oh, go tighten your fan belts or whatever it is you do in this incompetent establishment. Knuckle-dragging dolt. Uh, at least I can hear some decent music. Get out of here, Finchley. More abuse. Just go, Finchley. We don't want you here. Back up and get out. Before it's too late. Miss Moore, please? Oh, is that you, Agatha? Bartlett Finchley here. Yes, my dear, it has been a long time. Too long. Which indeed prompts this call. How about, um, dinner this evening? Yes, with yours truly. Why, at the restaurant of your choosing, of course. Oh, no, you're quite mistaken. There are establishments that meet my standards. In this city, well, I'm, um, I'm sure there are... Well, it is short notice, but yes, yeah, yes, I see. Some other time, then? I'll call you again. You have my pledge on it. Not at all. Good evening to you. Mrs. Donnelly, please. Pauline, is that you? Oh, and how's my favorite young widow this evening? Bartlett. Bartlett Finchley. You remember? Yes. I'm tip-top. And you? Splendid. Say, listen, Pauline, I was wondering, sort of spur of the moment and all that, but oh... I see... I see. Yes, perfectly. That's quite all right. No, I hadn't heard the good news. Well, I'm delighted for you. Truly delighted. In June. I'll send you a wedding gift. Of course. Good night. It's the telephone. I'm sure of it. Distorting my voice, twisting my words... What other explanation is there? An army of forces dedicated to embarrassing me, inconveniencing me, and generally making my life as miserable as possible. How much longer, may I ask? The phone's all fixed, Mr. Finchley. Go in the bedroom, too. So you say? Yeah. She's operating all right now. Had to replace a handset, though. Shouldn't give you any more trouble. I'm deeply indebted. Convey my best to Mr. Bell for his reliable invention. Uh, yeah, sure. Is there something else? Well, you tripped over the cord. Is that what you said? 
If that's what I said, you may rest assured that's what happened. Well, you're the boss, Mr. Finchley. Reason I asked, though, those wires sure looked like they were yanked out. Do they now? Proving what a vast storehouse of knowledge the phone company has yet to acquire. Okay. So long, then. Have a nice night. I shall certainly endeavor to do so. One thing. Yes. The thing about phones, though? What? Well, you see, they're just like any other piece of electronics. You have to be careful. Treat them right. Because if you don't, they won't do what you want. Kind of like people, I guess. Kick them to the curb, and they won't be there when you need them. You get back what you give out. But, well, I figure you know that already, don't you, Mr. Finchley? A smart man like you. Good night. So be it. Another evening alone. Just as well. At least this way I'll have the company of a person of quality. And welcome once again to Dinner for One on the Eating Channel. Tonight we prepare a bright and breezy repast guaranteed to liven up any kitchen. Oh, sp- there. Three new and exotic courses imported from jolly old England. For appetizers, a wonderful discovery called the Scotch Egg, followed by an exquisite cold watercress sandwich, mmm, and the traditional pièce de résistance, bangers and mash. Sound exciting? Well, it is. So sit back and enjoy, and keep a pencil and paper handy. Now for something completely different. Boulder Dash. Not worthy of a review. Cretans and halfwits at every turn. Well, who needs you? Who needs any of you? Mr. Bartlett Finchley is going out on the town. He's going to have a wonderful evening with some good wine, and who knows what lovely lady I may meet during my nocturnal meanderings. Who knows indeed? Dinner jacket, white shirt, and the red cravat. No, the blue. Or perhaps the polka dots. Yes. This will do. Now for a quick shave before dressing. Who do I see in the mirror there? Who can that attractive man be? Don't tell me. It's Bartlett Finchley. Good features. Strong chin, bred from quality stock. All I need to do is whisk off the stubble. Bit me. The shaver actually bit me. I'm bleeding. Get away, you filthy bugger. Finchley. Who's there? Finchley. Look in the mirror. What do you really see? Huh? Who's speaking? Take a good look. You're ugly, Finchley. That's not my face. It can't be. An ugly, dried up old man. Do yourself a favor. Do us all a favor. Use a straight razor. Stop speaking at once. You have no right. <laughs> Hello, operator. Get me the police. Someone's in my house. Hello? Hello? Finchley, get out of here. Stop. Stop this. You Finchley? Oh, thank God you're here, officer. Hey, your car? What? The car in the street. Yes, it is. What about it? She rolled down the driveway, almost hit a kid on a bike. Yeah, my son. But the, the brake was on. The emergency brake? You better get it fixed. I just did, this afternoon. Don't you believe him, officer? The car rolled right down the driveway and into the street. 
You're lucky you didn't hit somebody. Then you'd really be in hot water. Got the keys? They're in the other room. Better get them, then. I want to put on some clothes while you're at it. Look at him standing there in his underwear. I have a robe on, madam. Some robe? It's called a dressing gown. And tie it shut. I'll write you up for indecent exposure, too. Oh, yes, of course. All right, fella, you better pull her back in the garage. I'll give you a warning this time. Have those brakes checked first thing in the morning, understand? Perfectly. There is another matter I'd like to discuss with you, officer, now that you're here. And what's all the noise in his house? He's always throwing stuff, yelling at the top of his lungs. Is that true? No, I... I fell, that's all. I tripped and fell on the stairs. Is that why your face is bleeding? Precisely. What's the other matter? Matter? You said you have something to discuss. It's difficult to explain. You wouldn't understand. Eating then, Mr. Finchley. So is he going to move his car or what? In one moment, madam. For now, you may remain on my property until I return with the keys. At that time, I should like you to be out of my yard. Otherwise, I shall solicit the aid of this gendarme to forcibly eject you. Idiots. I need a drink. Perhaps one more. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's better. But if the car can't be trusted, how can I go out this evening? I'm a prisoner in this madhouse. Miss Rogers? Edith? Is that you? Yes, of course. You had second thoughts, and now you've come back. Where are you? But if you're not here, then... Who's typing? Get out of here, Finchley. Get out of here, Finchley. Is that all you can write, you infernal... machine? Who turned you on? Get out of here, Finchley. Get out of here, Finchley. No. You get out of my television set. What's that? The clock. I smashed it this afternoon. Smashed it to smithereens. And you. I destroyed you too. Oh, you won't get me. You won't get me. I won't let you. Help me, please. Someone. It's Bartlett Finchley, your neighbor. Let me in. It's that crazy man again. Don't let him in, Mom. He tried to kill me. I didn't. The car did. Don't you understand? Open your door. You get away from here. You can't follow me. You're only a car. My car. Stop. There's no one at the wheel. You must stop. I demand it. Back to my house. Then he can't follow me to the house. Locked. Wait. I have the keys after all. He can't get in here. I'm safe now. Safe. Where's the light switch? Burned out. Just as well. I'll hide here in the dark until the car goes away. Yes, that's it. Get out. Get out of here. Get out of here, Finchley. Now! Get away! I'll, I'll sneak away. Go, go somewhere, anywhere out of this town, far, far away. What? Those lights. Lyman. I can't see a thing. Cancel that call for backup. 
Paramedics have arrived, waiting their decision. Do you have a positive ID? Finchley, first name B for Bartlett. Stand by, 10-4. That man. He was running in his bathroom. Never saw anything like it. What's his condition? Flatline. He's gone. I'll put him down as DOA your arrival. Heart attack? That's what it looks like. What happened here, you know? Neighbors said they heard him shouting about something last night. He sounded scared. What about? Well, whatever it was, he took it with him. Was he out here? Right here, on the porch. Slumped down against the door. Eyes wide open like he saw a ghost. I figure he's on his way to his car. Which one? At the curb. Never got to move it like I told him. He must have been drunk. You can smell it on him. Good thing he forgot his car keys or he might have done some real damage. Yeah. Not now, though. Poor old guy. He was a royal pain, let me tell you. That's all over now. Maybe he did see something. Who knows? Maybe so. Yes, maybe so. It could just be that Mr. Bartlett Finchley succumbed to a simple heart attack and a set of delusions that were self-generated. It could just be that he was tormented beyond the breaking point by an imagination as sharp as his wit and as pointed as his dislikes. But as reported by those in attendance, this is one explanation that has definitely left the premises with the deceased. For now, look for it filed under M for machines in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after these words. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered while supplies last at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. A Thing About Machines, starring Mike Starr, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling and adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison. Heard in the cast were Doug James, Peggy Roeder, Rich Kominick, Turk Muller, Guy Burrill, Larissa Borkowski, Irene Olson, Heath Corson, Lynn Foley, Natalia Reed, and Peter DeVito. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Don Longo, Terry Jennings, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>